You ever wondered what happened to my Sims? You know, the spin-off Sims series where you're a cute little stubby guy who builds houses and furniture? Well, that was actually just one or two of the games in the series and every other installment after my Sims and my Sims Kingdom was like EA spun a wheel of video game genres and said, a car racing game? Well, you know that should work for Mario. Surely it'll work for characters as iconic as um a woman or the pizza man. This series lasted a grand total of three years years with six games released from 2007 to 2010 and then nothing else. My Sims pee pee poofed into the damn ether. Uh, well, other than a couple characters appearance as Sim City advisors in an obscure Sim City game for the Wii. But that was never the plan. No, EA had four other My Sims titles in the works that were either scrapped and had their developers go on to other Sims projects or mighty morphed into different My Sims games taking the series continuously in stranger and stranger directions until we were flying fucking airplane. So how did we go from EA violently shitting these games out like they were prepping for their My Sims colonoscopy to over a decade of complete radio silence? To figure that out, you're first going to need to come along with me to 2007, where the original My Sims released for the Nintendo Wii and DS and was one of the first and best games to come out of this insane cursed series. And I enjoyed the shit out of this game when I was young. I need you all to understand that My Sims is so burned into my brain that still to this day, as a 25 year old adult, I sometimes say a zipa when making a little pizza in my house. Zipa, are you kidding? It's not a f word, it's Siblish! Good little pizza guy, look what you did to me! My Sims is about rebuilding an abandoned town and making it a nice place for new folks coming in, so it focused on the building side of the Sims rather than any of the social elements of the game. Which was an interesting choice given the fact that most people find the social element of the Sims to be the most compelling part of the game. Not me though. Nah, me. You expect me to talk to some man in a bear suit walking around in my front yard? Hell no, brother. Won't happen. Don't give a sh. I'm too busy trying to figure out how I want my damn kitchen island. But building and decorating in The Sims was always the best part, at least in my opinion. And I love games that understand that just being given tools to build absolutely whatever you want is 100% enough. And My Sims was a pretty decent go at distilling that into a fun, cute little game. But it's not like there was only building, there were still some traces of classic sim social elements and you could dance and fart around in the fountain and shake the ever-loving sh** out of some trees. Oh yeah, give me those apples, you fucking piece of sh**. To me, My Sims is a cult classic, but critically, this game didn't really get that kind of love. It was given average reviews overall and um, performed averagely in terms of sales. Probably because the reviewers were not gay little eight-year-olds, uh, you might say. And that's also what I thought when I first sat down to write this video. But then I decided to test that hypothesis for myself. Try it out on my now aging 65 plus 25 year old brain. So I I ordered this game, not that game right there, and I also ordered a Wii Nunchuck, and I waited for those bad boys to come in, and I ripped that sh**. I played it, and I found that my Sims was absolutely robbed. This game was fun and cozy, and it lets you put like seven doors on the front of your house. Let's see which one my Sims Hillary Clinton chooses. Ah, left door number one. Kind of vanilla, but honestly, still a classic nonetheless. Also, please uh, note here that every time I say My Sims, I'm referencing My Sims Wii, which I have learned was vastly different from My Sims DS. You see, when I first began working on this video, my girlfriend was like, wait, that would be so fun. I love playing My Sims when I was little. But then every time I would describe something that I liked and enjoyed about the game, she would be like, what? I never did that sh the f are you talking about? That wasn't in My Sims. And then I found out that she'd played My Sims for the DS while I was talking about the Wii version. So she whipped out her DS and I fired up the fucking Wii and both of us were flabbergasted to say the least. And that's because My Sims DS is like if someone took the fucking Pokemon out of Pokemon. Like you're just some guy in a new town walking around talking to people. But unlike Sims, uh, you can't really do anything with the people. It's like if trainers in Pokemon were just like, hey man, how's it going dude? How are, how's the family? And then violent battle music played over your interaction as you have to fight for your life to pick the right dialogue options before time runs out. And then they give you money? Supposedly all that is helping restore the town? I don't know. You're basically just the vibes guy running around and checking up on people who fall the f*** out or some sh I don't know. Like the music is mostly the same. The art is the same. You get to create your character. A lot of the characters are the same. But this game is just so 
weirdly different to My Sims on the Wii. Watching Allison play My Sims on the DS was like running into an old flame at a grocery store, but like they've kind of let themselves go and are really like zoomed in for some reason and don't have the building mechanic that you loved them for at one point in their life but have now moved on from but still kind of look back fondly on from time to time. It's just not there. It's just not there. It's a different game. Different person. Still making the same old mistakes or something. Whatever that guy said. My Sims on the Wii though? Now that is an extraordinary blast from the past. A joyous little jaunt similar to games like Animal Crossing or Harvest Moon or Stardew Valley in the way they just make me want to start a new game and build up the town and make some of the worst goddamn furniture you've ever seen in your whole life. However, in juxtaposition to Stardew and Animal Crossing where there's a lot to do and manage, there's really not all that much beyond building things for the characters that request them to then be able to move more characters in to then receive more requests to make them happy to move more characters in and then you get an ice cream shop. A zipa. But My Sims also strangely enough had a port to the Blackberry in 2009. Gay people will be like, she saved me and it's just fucking my sims for the damn blackberry and then on top of that my sims also got a pc port in 2008 they're putting this shit out like it was skyrim but if skyrim were on the motorola razor you know popular gaming console the motorola razor and my sims the original game is the entire reason i'm making this video because it was a good ass game and the games that followed it were to be frank some of the most bash sequels i've ever seen except my sims kingdom I enjoyed my sims so much that when my Sims Kingdom came hot off the presses in 2008, it was absolutely not a question of whether I wanted to play this game. My mom fighting for her life in the Great Recession, trying to keep me and my little sibling alive, and I'm just down in the damn basement like, Fuzzy what the frick is a housing market, man? But seriously, when I finally got my grubby little paws on My Sims Kingdom, I was analyzing the box of this game on the car ride home from GameStop like it was Pokemon Platinum or some shit. I was ready. My Sims Kingdom is a spiritual sequel to My Sims, and while not exactly like its predecessor, was still for the most part focused on what I enjoyed the first game for, which was going around building little areas for the quirked up little characters that requested them. Except My Sims Kingdom had a much more structured story and adventure style gameplay loop rather than just do what these people want so more people will move into the town. My Sims Kingdom had you, the player, bouncing around a series of themed islands, helping out the residents there to improve the kingdom as a whole rather than slowly building up your own little town and building furniture for the residents. Characters in My Sims Kingdom will give you tasks to collect things like action figures, and even once you've completed the islands, there are more tasks to go back and complete, which definitely fleshes out that central idea of completing tasks much more than My Sims did with its, uh, quite frankly, slightly aimless tasks. My Sims Kingdom was more of an adventure-style puzzle game where you have to build houses or bridges or entire irrigation systems to the specification of the island residents. And this setup really allowed the cutesy characters from the previous game to shine. Characters from the previous game now appear together on these little islands, living their own lives on their themed little islands, and now with much more dialogue to convey their personalities and make the whole adventure just a nice, decently charming affair. The over-the-top fantasy style of this game is very Lego game or Lego movie-esque with the general antics of the characters and the settings. And while eight-ish year old me was disappointed that I couldn't create chairs that would kill you if you sat on them, I was still impressed overall with My Sims Kingdom and enjoyed the hell out of that game as well. You are also able to, once you beat the game, decorate your own island with all the blueprints and shit you picked up throughout the game. I'll say though, I kind of wish this part were more integrated throughout the game. I'm someone who gets really fucking jazzed about upgrading my shit and unlocking new outfits, and if the game had either given us a bigger boat that you can use to upgrade along the way or allowed you to unlock that home base island early on to upgrade it as you progress, I think that would have been a lot cooler. Maybe also integrating some kind of functional element like crafting blueprints or increasing your mana stores on your boat or on your island. Maybe that's redundant. I don't know. I'm just someone who really enjoys a home base element in a game. But so far in this series, we've seen a pretty solid foundation for the series start to come about. There's recurring quirked up lovable characters, a focus on building and decorating an adorable art style and a loose idea of a plot based on improving a place by fulfilling the needs of the residents or sims moving in. And in addition to those things, there were also lots of improvements made from My Sims to My Sims Kingdom in regard to story, writing, the socialization mechanic, the gameplay loop of gathering resources to build and fulfill wishes, and the general quality of life improvements like time spent staring at loading screens. That 
however, is, is all about the change. Welcome to My Sims Party, which by the name you might be thinking, okay, maybe the main character is gonna go around setting up elaborate parties or festivals for Sims in different towns or cities. Maybe it's a return to the original My Sims formula and it's just set in a big city and it's focused on creating events or parades or something where you can build stuff to draw folks to the town. No, it's just a bunch of terrible ass mini games all slapped together in a stupid slap ass half-ass party game. But you do get to build your house for some reason, so there's that. Go ahead, build that house. Go ahead and can build that house, man. Bet you love that sh So the point of My Sims Party is that you are once again in an abandoned ass town trying to get people to move in, but this fucking time they require you to beat them in their specific festival mini game in order to get them to move in. Reverse the damn polarity on this situation. I feel like it's like trying to rent an apartment in America. How's it going? It's me, your landlord. Yeah, uh, let me just go over your application here. Take a look at the last couple things. Should be, should be ready to go here in a little bit. Yeah, so it does look like I am missing from you a proof of income from your parents yard sale in 2005 of course the $13,000 deposit and one last you know kind of minor small oopsie forgot to mention you are going to need to beat me in a Mario Kart best of three but you are going to be blindfolded and you'll have to use the 2004 Donkey Kong bongos as your controller. Will you tell me if I pick the roller wheels? At the end of the day, My Sims Party is a hot steaming pile of cash grab. Phone it the f***ing rip off Mario Party in the worst, most careless way and call it a damn day. Speaking of which, why stop at one cheap Mario ripoff when we could go even further beyond? My Sims Racing. Hold, hold your horses there, hands and feet inside the Sim Mobile here because we need to hold all judgment until the very end because this is a kart racer with a story. And while it's no Mario Kart Wii here, uh, it, it does function as a driving game to, to a degree. And the plot of this game is that there's an abandoned ass town that you have to revitalize by beating a bunch of iconic My Sims characters like the Pizza Man in a series of races to which they will then be inspired to reopen their establishments. This is the part where generally I would pass judgment, maybe, maybe say some sarcastic remark, but actually no, this system makes a lot of sense. It's actually commonplace here in America. We do it all the time. In fact, just last week, I actually beat Robert Costco, owner and CEO of Costco in illegally sanctioned street races five times in a row. And then after that, he agreed that it was about damn time we opened up a Costco around these here parts. At any rate, if My Sims Racing does anything for the series, it's introduced a guy named Morcubus who will become a main villain for the rest of the series. Now you might be thinking, hey, Morcubus was also in My Sims Kingdom, but the difference is in that one, he was just a goth guy who uh, lived in a spooky, scary island. Now he is Jeff Bezos, a corrupt corporation owner, and we gotta take him down. Got take take it to the man. Porcupus is basically the Joja Mart of My Sims Racing, and is trying to do evil corporate guy stuff and buy out the town to and build Joja Mart HQ out here in the damn boonies. I don't know, it's never explained. He just he just wants to, and he's a bad guy, so gotta stop him. In terms of gameplay and racing, there are lots of different themed tracks to race on. Unfortunately though, some of the best tracks though are locked behind, uh, unfortunately, having to play the game first. And the first half of this game makes you rinse and repeat the same boring maps over and over until finally you get to unlock cool sh like the ice map and this sick fucking pinball map. You can customize your cart though. Uh, that, did I mention that one? You can you can do it. You can customize your cart. Hey, look at that. Look at that. Got a little gnome on top. Huh? Huh? My Sims Racing was it was fine. A bit better than a soulless cash grab, a whole lot better than My Sims Party, but still unfortunately light years behind the greatest racing game of all time, Disney Pixar Cars the video game for the PlayStation 2. More on that whenever I make a video about movie tie-in games, which I really should do because that <laughs> sounds fucking awesome. My Sims Agents, a game that I'll be honest, I have never played. When this game came out, I didn't really bat an eye. Maybe the marketing wasn't there, maybe I was too deep in Little Big Planet or Lego Batman to even care, but for whatever reason, I completely missed this game. And that was a mistake I'd like to rectify because from the looks of it, My Sims Agents was one of the best My Sims games to come from this series, believe it or not, I'm not. But Buddy is now an accomplished comic book author and telling the story of his best friend, our character in My Sims Agents through a comic book. This is a very simple, but kind of great setup. It allows the game to do exactly what it needs to do to succeed by providing 
adding a style for the game and a way to get the game away from the building and the decorating that past games have been based on. But it does it in a way that actually works and doesn't just throw you in a fucking kart racer or a party game for no damn reason. My Sims Agents is part platformer, part point and click puzzle adventure, and it does this in a way that changes up the genre and gameplay, but doesn't make me feel a little gross like it did with My Sims Party and racing because it felt like they were just trying to cash in on the cute quirky characters. No, My Sims Agents is a honest to goodness game. It, it's a game. The writing is back, the characters are back, the fun is back, and the game embraces the point and click puzzle adventure style without spoon feeding you information because gamers are dumb duty babies. Not me though. I grew up on the mean streets of Pop Tropica. I know how to do the one puzzle where there's the chicken and the feed. You can't take the feed because the fox will eat the chicken, but you can't take the the you can't take the fox because the chicken will eat the feed. But remember when I was sad My Sims Kingdom didn't have a home base? Well, welcome to My Sims Agents HQ, where you can decorate, add new agents to your team, and side missions that you can dispatch your team out on based on their skills. And this provides kind of a side distraction for when you're working on the main cases in the game. And boy, do I love a management side mission. Could count me into a management side mission. But to get all the possible juice out of this game, you have to really, really love the management side stuff because later on it becomes incredibly important to have completed all of those to unlock bonus content at the end. If you don't, the game ends on a bit of a cliffhanger uh, and has not a very good ending, so I've learned. I'm trying to be as spoiler free as possible with this one because honestly, I kind of want to play My Sims Agents now. Out of all these games, my Sims Kingdom and My Sims Agents are probably the ones that are most worth your time if you have a Wii and love nostalgic games like this. I personally would probably also recommend playing old My Sims as well, but that's just the nostalgia beast clawing at my door, begging to be let in and fed copies of Tack and the Power of Juju or something. And speaking of hangers and cliffhangers, My Sims Sky Heroes, otherwise known as Taylor Swift going out to get a package off her porch simulator. Now by some act of the devil, I missed My Sims Agents, but apparently went back in for another hit of the old My Sims. God, it feels wrong to say My Sims Blunt here, but you know what? Uh, my Sims Blunt is the words that are written on the teleprompter right now for me to say, and sometimes I feel like the me that writes these things doesn't realize that there's also a me that has to say these things, and then there's a me that has to edit these things, and she's probably about to cut me. Please, no, wait, I don't have much time. So I hit the My Sims Blunt at probably the worst time, 2010, with My Sims Sky Heroes, a game that I think I played maybe 10 minutes of and then shut the Wii down. Shut it all down, shut it all down, stepped away. Took some time for myself to reflect on how I really wished I had those 10 minutes back to grind Papa's Pizzeria or something, I don't know. My Sim Sky Heroes is like if the space combat levels in Ratchet and Clank 2 had bigger maps, but were like 20,000% less fun to play. It's not that this game is terrible. This game is mediocre at best and doesn't really offer anything except cutesy dialogue from the characters and a constant loop of doing more dog fights to unlock things and so on and so forth. It's just My Sims racing, but the new plane parts you get don't always result in actual physical upgrades for your plane. This this is a game that if you want to actually finish it, you probably have to force yourself to do so, which kind of says everything you need to know about the game. And this game, as a result, performed very poorly and was the final nail in the coffin for the My Sim series, a relatively dense but incredibly short-lived series. One of the more bittersweet things about My Sim Sky Heroes is that it was originally slated to be a My Sims Agents 2, which, given the fact that Agents is one of the best in the series, could have at least ended the series on a high note or maybe even have opened up the door for more games afterwards. After Sky Heroes flopped, there are rumors of a game known as My Sims Friends for the 3DS, which would have been a return to the town builder origins of the series, but this was scrapped as well. So what happened to My Sims and what's left of the series today? Well, uh, not much. After Sky Heroes tanked, pretty much anything My Sims related disappeared into the ether, leaving behind only references to the series and mainline Sims titles. Which is sad, at least to me, because when you look at these games, you see so much style and energy baked into these quirky little characters that even finds a way to shine in the most half-assed, phoned-in cash grabs of games like Racing and Sky Heroes. EA should have been leaning further into the charm factors of these games instead of just sterilizing them and milking the ever-loving shit out of every ounce of them and then just pumping out DLCs like there's no tomorrow. Sorry, I started talking about The Sims 4 there. Uh, 
My bad. So EA did what EA does best and that's what happened to my Sims. In terms of where it could have ended up or what it could have been, or if I was allowed to magically bring the series back for one last modernized hoorah of nostalgia for the series, I would think it could go in one of two directions. First, the most obvious. Reboot the original My Sims game, but inject it with everything the series developed along the way, like the diverse settings and puzzle building from My Sims Kingdom. Maybe make the furniture builder less tedious by having a management aspect like agents where you're able to build up a construction business with sims who do carpentry, sims who put in pools, sims who do the goddamn HVAC, I don't know. But maybe make the quaint abandoned town an up and coming city that needs a lot of love to really flesh it out and give it its own culture and personality. You could go to different boroughs in the city or build homes for sims in the suburbs or build a karate dojo for the crocodile men living in the sewer. I don't know, just make it something that really leans into the personality of the characters and the settings in the series, but isn't a tedious set of busy work repetitive tasks to do over and over for some vague reason. Let the impact you're making on the town or city feel tangible and physical, and you would at least have a game that I would really enjoy with the nostalgia bait of the Wii era that many people my age would probably fall for. The second less obvious direction would be in the alternate universe where My Sims Agents 2 happened and the series was able to go in its own strange direction and keep putting these quirked up characters in dark and more serious settings like Agents did in sort of a Lego Batman-esque way. I'm not saying to give Buddy the bellhop a f***ing gun, but maybe lean into the Inspector Gadget or Totally Spies-esque mystery element while still making it fun and goofy. And go even further beyond with the Agents management and make it a full Yakuza side business as minigame. But that's it. That's my state of the My Sims Union, and as an Animal Crossing Stardew Valley head, yeah, I would absolutely love to see another game in this series. Thank you so much for watching, hoping at least one of you gets a free pizza at some point this week if you want it, and if you're lactose intolerant, I wish you a very lactate pill, and if you're gluten free, I wish you a very cauliflower crust, but that's it. That's it for me, that's all I got. Goodbye, goodbye now, goodbye, see ya. Pussy boy!